two weeks ago i posted a poll on what other concepts or languages you would like to learn next and most of you had voted for the microservices architecture patterns and oauth2 and open id connect so i'll be starting off with both these series in parallel i've been almost done with the kubernetes series i have done the deployment strategies in kubernetes which you would have seen recently and i know and i respect most of you don't work on kubernetes but my idea was to give something new so that you can learn something new and most of you wanted to learn oauth2 and open id connect along with microservices architecture pattern as always if you have any questions on any topic do mention that in any comment section of any video i do read all the comments if i am able to respond i'll be able to respond to you then and there in this video we will be looking at some of the security essentials and the basics in order to learn oauth2 and open id connect let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers so how is your understanding of security with respect to authenticating and authorizing applications we'll start off with the basic concepts which we require in order to create a secure application so we will start off with authentication and authorization then we will understand what is open id connect and oauth2 then we will learn what is access token and what is id token and how are they different from each other we will also look at the resource server and the authorization server how are they different and what are they and also finally we will discuss the resource owner and the client so i'll try to cover majority of this in this particular video and then this series will evolve right so i'll be adding more and more topics so right now my thought process is to have these five different topics but if let's say the session takes more than 20 minutes i'll end wherever i stop there and then we will look at the remaining parts in the next video so that you don't get bored and i don't get bored as well so the first basic thing is authentication and authorization so what do you know about authentication let's take a simple example right we always use user ids and passwords whenever we enter or log into some systems this is a typical authentication system so when you provide something in order to log into a system that is what authentication is and the corresponding system which is in the background stores your information about what you entered and it knows who you are so that is what authentication is let's take an example right so we all use paytm if you are in india you know what is paytm if you are not from india you, you can relate it to any other payment wallet so here i am going to use paytm which is an indian version of a wallet which we all use for digital payments right now i have not logged into the paytm account so you can see the login option here so here i am going to just try to show you what authentication means in terms of paytm i don't have to enter the username and password instead i can do by scanning this qr code and i can log in directly so i already have paytm installed in my mobile account um, if you can see this particular option in the left side this is my mobile uh, i am just live rendering this mobile feed into my video so here i just click on the scan option and i am going to show this whole scan option here and i have to click on the proceed in order to say okay let me authenticate myself to use this particular login so if i click on it and see that by default my login is coming here so this helps us to authenticate in a much faster manner without even providing a username and password however the qr code directly logs into my mobile app which i have already logged in so this is one way of authenticating the other way of authenticating is let's go to draw.io so if you have not known about draw.io it's again a flowchart maker which is completely open source and you can leverage it so i'll show you what authentication is in this sense right so now if i click on google drive it says that you will have to authorize me so in fact first we have not even authenticated ourselves if you remember what we said there are two terms authentication and authorization so it's asking me to authorize but however i have not even authenticated let's try clicking on the authorize option the moment i click on the authorize option it's asking me to enter a username and password however it is redirecting me to google so in case of paytm paytm had my username and password and in my mobile i already had it right so i was able to use my username and password from my mobile account however in case of draw.io i don't have a login so uh, draw.io redirected me to google because i am going to use google drive 
and Google has its own authentication server and it's asking me to provide Google's information right so I'll have to provide some information let's say I provide my username and password The moment I provide my username and password, it just takes me to the next stage. So if you remember, there are two things now, authentication and authorization. And when we clicked on draw.io, it says authorize me. So first it needed an authentication and then it's asking me to authorize. So authentication is the first part when we entered our username and password and see there my photo got loaded. So that way Google has identified that, okay, this is a genuine user who was logged into uh, his account using the Gmail account. And now I know this is the guy. The next step is to authorize you saying, can I provide draw.io this particular access? See that this will give full privilege for us to allow somebody to say, okay, access this particular drive instead on behalf of this particular person. So that's what is authorization. So authorization is giving access to somebody else temporarily so that they can act on your behalf. So authentication is logging in directly to a particular server and authentic authorization is giving a temporary access to log into a particular system and access it. A typical example could be when you log in or check into a hotel, you will provide your ID card to authenticate yourself. And then the rooms, once they are booked, you will be given a temporary access card so that you can access your rooms. So that is what authorization is. So you will be given an access token or an access card to temporarily access that particular room for a stipulated amount of time. So the room doesn't know what details you have. However, you can access that particular room with that particular ID card, right? And that is a temporary token which you are given. And that's what is authorization. So I'm pretty sure you now have an idea of what is authentication and authorization. Let's move on to OpenID Connect and OAuth2. So why people are talking about OpenID Connect and OAuth2? So the moment you authorize and authenticate something like this, you are involving too many parties, right? So you are using draw.io and then you are using Google, Google account and there are too many parties involved. So like this, you can have a Facebook account, you can have a GitHub account, everybody has their own account, right? So now you need a central interface or a specification in order to connect and retrieve information and authorize access to our information, right? Because here I have access only in Google, but I am giving draw.io to get my information into the server, right? So that is why OpenID Connect and OAuth2 were created. So OAuth2 is a framework using which you can authenticate and authorize. And OpenID Connect helps you in authenticating. So OAuth2 is the new um, specification over OAuth, which provides OpenID Connect as an authentication layer. Basically, if you want to enter your username and password and then get some token out of it, that is what OpenID Connect helps you with. And OAuth2 helps you in providing something like this, asking user what kind of access you wanted, right? So that is what OAuth2 and OpenID Connect does. So op OpenID Connect is a layer over OAuth2, which helps you in connecting to the destination with your username and password. And then it creates a temporary token, which can be accessed in your OAuth2, and you can get a new authorization so that you can go ahead and access some particular rest endpoints or something like that. Now, if we come back to this, so here we did authentication initially, which would have been using OpenID Connect and we used authorization and that is using OAuth2 and see that the URL says OAuth and this is typically using OAuth2. So Google is by default using OAuth2 for authenticating and authorizing our request. Right? So this is the high level what OAuth2 and OpenID Connect are, right? So OpenID Connect is just for retrieving your username and password and giving you some something temporarily called an ID token. And OAuth2 helps you in getting access to a particular resource. For example, in this case, it's Google Drive and it gives something called an access token. Now we will see what are, are these are in the next topic. Meanwhile, just know that OpenID Connect is the authentication layer. Op OAuth2 is the authorization layer, right? That's what these two are now what is an access token and an id token so access token is similar to the temporary access card which i was mentioning about the hotel uh, room login right so you will be given an access token which is just temporary the moment you check out of that hotel it will be revoked right so that is what an access token is id token is something specific for yourself 
Typical example would be PAN card, right? So we have our information about ourselves in this particular ID token, right? And that's what ID token means. And this ID token could be again, um, uh, it has a time period, right? So in case of Open ID Connect, Open ID Connect uses something called as an ID token by default. OAuth uses access token because when you connect or when you, for example, here in draw.io, it connected me to some account, right? But draw.io needs to know who is this guy, right? So now the moment I allow this, draw.io will know my name and it will load my name into the top right corner. See this, it retrieved my name information, right? And also it knows what email ID I'm using. So basic information about myself is retrieved via the open ID connect information or the ID token. So the ID token has some basic information about my existence and access token is a way to access this Google Drive. So if, if I want to put it again, ID token is something specific to a user who allowed you to access it and access token is something temporarily to access a particular resource. So the typical example for the hotel reservation is our ID card, our government ID card could be the case. That is an ID token which has information about ourselves. A temporary access card which is given to access each room is a access token. So that is what access tokens and ID tokens are. So these are core concepts you need to understand in order to understand OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect and implement them, right? I hope you're clear till now. So if you still have any doubts, do mention that in the comment section below. I can get back to you or I can make a separate video on each of these, right? When we start creating applications with OpenID Connect and OAuth 2. So the next term is resource server and authorization server. Now, if you relate to all these, these are just falling in place with authentication, authorization and stuff like that, right? And I'm drawing parallels with the draw.io example, which we are using. So resource server in this case is draw.io because draw.io is holding a resource, basically this website to access something, right? And that is what resource server means. So in my case, draw.io is a resource server and Google is the authentication or authorization server. So Google authorized me to allow Google Drive. So that is what the authorization server means here. So Google is the authorization server and draw.io is the resource server. And these are some terms which you will be using when you are creating applications. So in the example which we saw, draw.io already implemented OpenAuth, OpenID Connect or OAuth2. But if we are creating applications, we will have to create something similar, right? So we will fall under resource server. And if you have a central authentication or authorization mechanism in your company, that is your authorization server. And that's what these terms mean. The next one is resource owner and the client. So resource owner is not the application, but ourselves. So client is draw.io in this case, client is the draw.io and resource owner is us because we are allowing draw.io to use our information, right? So resource owner is nothing but us and the client is nothing but the application. So resource server is again the client, right? And that's what we saw. So resource server is where our uh, URL is hosted. So draw.io slash something, something, right? OAuth or something like that. So those are the different terms which we need to understand in order to get a deep dive understanding of what is OpenID Connect and OAuth 2. The moment we start coding, we will be using these terms inside our configurations, right? So there are more terms as well. I'll just cover that in the next video. Um, I'll just summarize what we discussed. So we saw what is authentication and what is authorization. These are the basis for any security principle. You can draw parallels with OpenID Connect as authentication mechanism and OAuth 2 as an authorization mechanism. OpenID Connect is the protocol and OAuth 2 is the framework. Access tokens are a temporary way to access a particular resource so that you are authorized to access that particular thing. ID token is something which has your information once you authenticate with the system, you will be given an ID token which has temporary information about the user who has been logged in. Resource server is where all your resources are going to be redirected to after authentication and authorization. Authorization is server is where you have your usernames, passwords, roles, grants, scopes, everything in the server. A typical example is Google in our case. So resource owner is ourselves who has information about ourselves and we are allowing somebody else to use access from our Google account. And client is the application which is going to use our information in order to collect information about ourselves and use it for any particular need or securing its application. 
so these are some of the essential which i wanted you to um, know before getting into the uh, security aspects of creating secure applications in microservices world i hope you got a basic understanding of what are the key terms here i don't want to put every term into this video but um, i hope you've had a basic understanding of all these terms so if you feel otherwise do let me know in the comment section below uh, again mention if you need more detailed explanations or something i can definitely do it as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much